Hey there everyone, Tayesh here back again with another video and in this video we are going to continue the process that we have been doing with the code spaces. GitHub code spaces is one of the fantastic services. I don't have to really worry about my code. It's always all the time save in GitHub. It can be easily accessed by people like you for whom I make the tutorial and I explored it a little bit more. I tried that how can I make a developer's life easier, especially the person who is watching it. So what I've done is let me show you that. I actually went into the configuration file of this dev container so that maybe somebody is forking this entire repository and want to just spin it up as a code space. So how can I make his life a little bit easier? Of course, the very first thing I did is post create command because once actually you run this, your npm install or your node module folder is not there. So you cannot instantly just come up and say, hey, npm start and it's not going to work. So you need to run an extra command, npm install. We are all pretty much aware of it. So I run that as a post create command so that you don't have to manually run it. On top of that, I have created this customization. I had to look up a little bit more in depth in the documentation. Uh, not yet used to with that. Uh, there are a couple of customization settings that actually you can work on with. If you just put up a comma and I put up a enter, notice here, uh, you can put up customization for code spaces as well as for the VS code as well. I have put up the settings for VS code, so I'm going to just remove it. There we go. So uh, what I'm going to rebuild this container because the settings I have just enabled that we will do that later on. So what I've done here is is really simple that I have added an extension. So there are a couple of extensions. I wanted to try it out that maybe somebody comes up. He loads up that extension automatically. So notice here all the extension that I wanted. They are here. How I did that. You just write a simple new key value pair extensions, which is an array and in which you can write comma separated values. In case you want to add more extension, just click on the extensions tab and just look for your favorite extension. Probably uh, these are already installed for me. So maybe an extension for React. Uh, so I'm pretty sure there is some extension for React. Maybe uh, React, uh, something like any anything, anything. Just wanted to show you the syntax. So maybe this is the one you are looking up for. You can just click on this and grab the extension ID once you grab that. You simply go up into dev container and simply go ahead and paste it up here. That's all. Uh, there are a couple of modes. These are extensions. These are settings. And if you put up a comma, notice here, there is a dev port as well. You can mention that which is the development port you want to open up. Uh, we have already gone through with that. So this is forwarded ports. That's dev port, which one you want to open. Another important setting is settings because it was a little bit difficult for me for teaching purposes that the editor font is always like 12, which is too, too small for the teaching and videos. And the terminal font also needs to be a little bit bigger. So I have embedded these settings. Now, whenever anybody spins up these uh, machines as a dev container after forking it, they'll get all the settings out of the box. I tried to stop my container, rebuild it, and it works out of the box. So fantastic one. Now, the goal of this video is really simple that this is not the goal actually of the video. The goal is really simple. We have learned that we can actually serve this. That is fine. And by the way, let me show you my ex, uh, this terminal as well. Uh, this looks pretty nice. Big font. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, what I want to do further is I want to have a MongoDB Atlas and through that MongoDB, I want to connect and see that how I can actually manage all these things uh, within just the browser and the GitHub code space. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I would like to keep my folder of database connection as a separate. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, let's go ahead and make a, a folder, call it as simply uh, database, database, come on, database, there we go. And uh, inside this database, let's create a file. We are going to call this one as database again, database.js, but this file needs to go inside the database. So let's go ahead and move it inside the database and database.js. Feel free to call it whatever you like. I like to call it as database.js. Let's see how we can do that. Already we have installed the mongoose. So mongoose is going to help us in doing that. So let's go ahead and call this one. I think we have installed the mongoose or I'm just running ahead myself. No, we have installed the mongoose. <laughs> All right. So we're going to say that, hey, let's give it a, a mongoose. So we're going to say a mongoose that will be require and we'll be saying give me mongoose. Once we have mongoose, then we can actually go ahead and install that. Obviously, one very, very important thing is my code space should have this URL. So I'll go into settings and I can see here are all my secrets are code space secrets and the port secret is already locked. Yes, two days ago. 
I need to add another secret. I'll walk you through how we can do that. I'll do that a little bit off screen as just to protect my keys. But obviously we will have a key. Uh, we're gonna call this one as Mongo db underscore url feel free to call it whatever you like and we will grab it from uh, process.env it's a long big object we can grab any keys what we like just like we grabbed uh, the port here once we have uh, done this then we're going to simply would like to export this so that other files can use it if they want to so we're going to go ahead and say hey exports i'm missing an s exports.connect and this will be a simple method so let's go ahead and fire up an arrow method or arrow function in case somebody is getting bothered with that. Now, Mongoose is really, really super easy to connect with the database. All you have to do is Mongoose uh, dot, and you have to say connect. That's all it takes. Yep, that's it. It takes two parameters. In fact, it takes a couple of more parameters. You can search for that. But the major one is URI, which is your, your URL for locating that database, which is a string format. Then we have a couple of options that we can provide and optionally we can go for a callback as well. So really simple. First of all, let's go ahead and provide this uh, URL. So MongoDB URL, whatever that is. Then we'll provide a couple of options. I'll walk you through with those options as well. And then we are going to go ahead and provide just uh, a callback. We can go ahead and do provide a callback. Uh, there are a couple of ways. Providing a callback is also fine, but these database connection uh, might fail as well sometime. Here, I don't want to inject a try catch because this is just an initial and crucial operation. I would say that if everything goes right, then just give me a console log. If doesn't goes right, I don't want to move forward in that case. So that's my goal. So I'll use it dot then and catch. So here is my then and here is my catch in case everything fails. First, let, let's handle the fail part because it's easier. This catch and fail both, uh, this then and catch both gives you a callback. So here we go. There we go. This is a callback. This one will additionally gives you error because obviously you are handling the error. Now let's see how we are going to handle the error. We are going to first go ahead and say that uh, DB connection fails. So something like that. DB or let's write it in lowercase. DB connection failed should be in uppercase. Looks like somebody is yelling at us. And then we can go ahead and put up another console log. There we go console log and this might be dumping down the error or maybe error.message so whatever that is uh, we need to actually check out first by doing a console log that what kind of error is and how we can extract the message from it okay and then we want to use a process which is an inbuilt node process and we don't want to proceed further so we have to use an exit this exit takes two parameters uh, if you go ahead and hit control space to find out how we can actually work with that so this is the uh, process, uh, it's not working out. So we can actually click on this one to find out uh, what this is. We have to provide a code, which is going to be a number. And this number is usually between uh, either zero or one. You can read a little bit more here. Uh, you can find it in the documentation as well. So when you simply go ahead and say zero, that means, hey, nothing goes wrong. I really want to exit this process. But, but when it says one, then server automatically knows that something was bad and uh, we should be worried about that. But that's exactly what we want to do. Now, remaining part about these options, you're going to find in every single documentation as well as on the Stack Overflow, that there are two compulsory methods to pass out up here. So the first one is uh, use new URL parser. I hope I wrote it correctly and that goes as true. Now, you don't have to worry too much about that. What happened is, MongoDB actually was working with a different style architecture uh, in their document and then when they updated after version 5, they actually moved in a tiny bit of new methods and approach and all of that. So that's why what they ask you to do is uh, provide these two things. Uh, one is use new URL parser and use unified topology. Uh, you don't have to give it a too much of the depth as long as we are not talking about MongoDB series. That is all you need. Now, the important thing is that uh, I'll just verify this again if I haven't made any typo. That looks great. All right. So the only thing that's remaining now is to have this MongoDB URL. And I would love to walk you through with the uh, part of how we can actually go ahead and do that. So here is another browser. And all you have to do is look for on the Google, which is MongoDB uh, Atlas. So MongoDB Atlas is the way. You can go ahead and install it using uh, Docker or whatever you like. Uh, in this case, we are using MongoDB Atlas, which is a free cloud-based service. They have enough generous free tier. 
and deploy a multi-cloud, all you have to do is just sign in. That's it. They allow Google login as well, whatever suits you. You can go ahead and work on with that. Read about them as well. I've already logged in. This is the screen that you see after selecting the some default options and stuff. And it also gives you a prompt to get started, but I have disclosed, I've closed that form and I would like to work with that. So first thing that I'll do is do a database access. I would like to add a new database user and uh, you can go ahead and use IAM users or password certificate. I'll go with the password in this case. So new user, I'll just name my user as Hitesh and I'll enter a password as well. Not really highly secure, but uh, yes, I remember the password now. And I will just say, hey, I would like to just go ahead and add this one. Now, in addition, if you're using in production, then the settings are really, really different. You might want to contact your DBA for that. I'll just click on add user. And yes, I know it's a bad password. <laughs> Uh, I'll just remove it once I'm done with the tutorial. So here it is. It is being added and it says MongoDB role, all access. So yeah, it has the access of all of that. Then what you need to do is provide the network access of that. So what we want to do is add an IP address. So uh, what IP address you want to give. So I want to allow the access from anywhere. And I'll just say, hey, this will be temporarily. I will delete it for sure. Uh, later on, don't want my database to be accessed everywhere only where my code is hosted, maybe on AWS or something, I want to provide only that IP. I'll just hit confirm. So it will take a little bit of the time that how and from where the database should be accessed. Fantastic security rules. And hopefully this should be all good. And it has the access to all resources. That's what I'm looking up for. Let's just do a magic video editing. I think it's necessary here. All right, so it's all done now. So uh, you'll be able to connect with the database from all of the IP address. So yeah, really basic. Now what we want to do is click on the database here and we want to connect to a database. So we will say that, hey, I want to connect. And this, you have to click on MongoDB Compass. That's how we want to connect, not through the driver because we are not connecting with driver. We're connecting with Mongo. So this actually gives you a URI. This is the entire URI. And again, notice here at the end, it says test, which is going to be the name of your database. In case you don't like test, you like something else, go ahead and place that. I'll copy this. And now I have to go back onto this browser, have my code secret, and we have to mention the new repository secret. So I'm gonna edit my secret in a minute, but first I want to grab the database key, which is this. Don't want to make a mess, so I'll copy this, and I'll place this here. Now, obviously, I have to go behind the scene and save it because this couple of things needs to be edited. So you need to provide the exact password and then what is the name of the database. I'm going to call this one as test. I don't mind it, but I need to change it to the password. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll do that uh, behind the video editing magic. All right, so I have added it up here. MongoDB URL is there and this should now have an access to this one. I really want to reload the apply to have the secrets and all these changes, uh, but don't want to reload it right now. Otherwise, all of the code that I have added up here might go away. So I'm going to go ahead and add the dev container. Uh, whatever the changes I have made, I want to push them and I want to add the database. So let's go ahead and add a connect message to this one. So database, yep, I want to add this. Yeah, now it's all good. So I'll just say in the database, database connected, or I'll say app connected to MongoDB. I'll just say, hey, add these commit messages. And I'll say, hey, just sync all the changes. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and do that. It should be prompting me up for a reload. And don't want to do a reload right now, but I think it should have done. All I'll do is just hit a command R to refresh the entire uh, page. So this will take my code space to allow to set all these variables and all these stuffs. Shouldn't be taking much more time. And notice here, no matter how much I reload and everything, all these extensions and everything uh, gets updated for me every single time. So let me go ahead and pause this, I think. No, it's all done. Okay, uh, should be all up and running. Now let's go ahead and have this. Let's see that if we can go ahead and say npm start, and there we go, server is running at port 4000. And our process still didn't exist, exited, uh, simply because we actually never called this one. So we need to go ahead and call this value as well. So let's go into app.js and inject the database. 
So just after we have required the .env, I also want to initialize my database. So I'll just say require, and I want to require from uh, dot slash database, and then there is a file database.js, and then I want to run the method. So I'll just chain it up directly here, connect and run it. Uh, save this, now let's stop this and run it one more time. So hopefully if we haven't made any typo, things should be all good. So notice here, uh, the URI parameter to open URI must be a string, got an object. So what is happening is we got a mongoose connect. So create connection is a string. So let's see, looks like we have made some typo. So this should be, this is coming up as a string. Uh, that's something. The URI parameter of open URI must be a string, but this is what they are getting an object. Let's go ahead and see that what we are getting as a MongoDB URL. So let's go ahead and log this one. And there we go. And we'll say that, hey, just give me this. Or we can just go ahead and say type off and we'll be just copying and pasting this value. Copy this, paste it up here and let's see. All right. So let's go ahead and run it one more time so that we can verify what we are getting. So it says DB connection failed. And this is what we are getting as an object. So this is a problem. In the other case, we were able to actually extract it. But this time what we'll be doing is since this is an object, all we got to do is really simple, nothing much to be worried. And again, I don't like to edit out these parts because these are the things which actually helps you to understand the things. Okay, all right, let's try it one more time. And this time we go ahead and say a DB connection failed. And it should be a string. All right, so seems like my variables didn't got up updated. I somehow forgot to actually reload that. And for that, all you have to do is click on the code spaces at the bottom, or you can hit the command shift P. And all I did was rebuild the container. Anytime you add more variables, environment variables or something, then you have to rebuild the container. Now it seems like okay as of this time, I tried it again to run this. It's a string now, which we made a mistake, which you are aware of it now. So let's go ahead and actually do something when the database connection is successful. So right now we did wrote nothing inside this then. So let's go ahead and just wrote a simple message for us uh, that might say, hey, uh, uh, db, db, oops, connected successfully. Is it correct? Hope so. Uh, don't mind it. Uh, this needs to go away. Looks good now. Let's go ahead and try it again. NPM start. And there we go. DB connected successfully. So this is officially now connected to the database. But one thing I would like to verify again more is if I am able to have something here or not, because as of now, I haven't done anything uh, in the collection. So there we go. We have nothing. But obviously, we want to uh, go ahead and add some of these uh, values up here. So let's go ahead back up here. Uh, looks great. This one is great. Okay, at least one thing we can be assured now is that my database is connected. Okay, so if the database is connected and we also learned a lot about the GitHub code spaces, why not to just go ahead and build a simple authentication system? It's not going to be very complex, but at least learn about creating a user, creating the tokens, sending these tokens into cookies, as well as a login part, and I'll give you some assignments as well. So that's all we'll be doing in this particular video. And one more important thing is uh, make sure once you are done with this, you really want to stop the current code space. Uh, if you don't do that, that means it's going to keep on running into the hours that we really don't want. Uh, we want to only use these code spaces when I'm either teaching or actually I'm using it. So that's all what we'll be doing in this video. Let's go ahead and catch up in next one.